Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. You can find my site at the URL shown on the screen. Please click the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and be notified of any future video updates. A few months ago, I started a series on learning the Spotfire expression language. I covered the basics of calculations, keywords, node navigation, and a handful of functions. Last week, I introduced the concept of access names, and this week I'm going to start down a very long path of explaining access names one visualization at a time. I'm starting with bar charts, which use axis.color and axis.x. Now, I thought this was going to be a quick and easy summary, but I learned real fast that there are quite a few things that can trip you up with these access names. I also learned that even though you can use access names on a given visualization, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should, and there might be a better option. I'll show you what I mean. Now, before we dive into access names, I need to make a critical point that will help with understanding later on. In this page, I've set up two visualizations, one with color by and one without. Both charts use the exact same expression, but they render and calculate differently. Even though you can't see it, Spotfire is using axis.color to tell the visualization to sum oil for each reservoir and for each month in the chart on the right. This will be important for content that I'll show you later on. So mentally bookmark that and let's get started with axis.x. Axis.x refers to the column of data on the x-axis of the bar chart. This data can be a date hierarchy, a categorical column of data, or a categorical hierarchy. It's not really meant for continuous data. We'll begin with two examples using a date hierarchy. On top, this expression calculates what percentage each month makes up of the total data set. The first part of the expression, sum of oil, sums oil for each node or month on the visualization. That value is then divided by the second part of the expression, which is sum of oil over all axis.x. So Spotfire is summing oil for all of the months on the x-axis because I used the all node navigation method. The total of all the months adds up to 100%. That's pretty easy. Now on bottom, this expression calculates a cumulative sum by summing oil for the month and then adding that to the sum of all previous months as specified by the all previous node navigation method. Now, when working with dates, you must use a hierarchy. Without a hierarchy, you'll get an error, which I'll demonstrate by changing what's on my x, by changing what's on my x axis. Instead of the hierarchy, I'll just take the date column, and you can see that it now says cannot find axis.x, and I have to revert back to hierarchy. If you really want just the date and not a hierarchy, there is a hack for this, a single level hierarchy. And now we are using just the date and not getting an error. Next, let's look at axis.x with a categorical column of data. In this page, I replaced the, the date column with the reservoir column. The resulting visualization shows the percentage each reservoir contributes to the total. Simple, right? Well, what if you want to add color to each reservoir? This is where things start to get a little bit tricky. So if I change my color by selector to reservoir, you'll see that the values change. So why does this happen? Remember what I said in the beginning about how axis.color is working behind the scenes even though it's not written in the expression? That's what's happening here. Even though we have not changed the expression, Spotfire is incorporating color by into the expression and I can prove it. So I'm going to add a new bar chart and I will put my reservoir on the x-axis just like I've done here and I'll write a very similar expression and so now instead of using axis.x I will use axis.color and you can see that the resulting visualization is exactly the same. So this is what Spotfire is actually doing under the hood. In both expressions, where reservoir is on the x-axis, Spotfire sums oil for each node on the x-axis, which is the reservoir. And then it divides it by the total sum of oil for each reservoir, which results in 100%. You would think that it would calculate each reservoir as a percentage of the overall total, but it does not. 
It does not because axis.x is not referenced. Instead, axis.color tells it to divide the sum of oil for each node by the sum of oil for all of each color. Because the node and the color are the same, we get 100%. Therefore, it makes sense that to get the desired end result, we would just add axis.x back into the expression. So let me do a little bit of work here. I'll take this off. And again, just as a reminder, what we're trying to see are these values, but we just want different colors here. And to get that, we're going to put axis.x back into the expression along with the intersect keyword. And now we have the desired end result, and we got there by using intersect all axis.x and then all axis.color. I had a lot of trouble with this. In my experiments, I added intersect and axis.x, but I was missing the node navigation. Whenever I've used intersect, it's always been intersect, a column name, a node navigation, and then a column name. So it wasn't necessarily intuitive to me to add in another node navigation method. So I'd like to give a big thank you to uh, Xu Ting Fu at Tibco Support for helping me with this. I couldn't have gotten this without her help. And then finally, I have one more axis.x example where the node and the color are not the same. So in this page, I've broken up the reservoir by field and positioned the bars side by side. You can see that the sum of each color equals 100%. And this is taking the sum of oil for each field in a reservoir and dividing it by the total oil for everything that is on the x-axis. If these bars were stacked, the sum of the percentages wouldn't really make any sense. You can see that they add up to well over 100%. And so the side-by-side -side representation is really the only way in which this makes sense. Okay, that's enough of axis.x. Let's move on to axis.color. Now, I really struggled with axis.color this week, and it turns out that axis.color is an option for bar charts, but it's really better suited for line charts. So what I'm going to do is show you two examples of my early experiments that don't really make practical business sense, although they will help to explain how axis.color works. And then I'll give a reasonable example that I still wouldn't really put on a bar chart, and I'll show you why. So in this page, I've got two visualizations that I want to walk you through, and I have a cross table showing my raw data at the top, just so it's easy for you to trace the values from the table to the, visual, to the bar chart. The expression I've written on this bottom left visualization says, give the sum of oil for all axis.color. And that is essentially asking for one number. And that is why you see the same total for the month repeating for each unique color value. In January, my total is 1.64. You see 1.64 repeated for both the two reservoirs that have values. And the same happens in all the other months, 1.49, it just repeats. Now, this is not useful, but it helps us understand that Spotfire will take the result of the expression and place it on the chart for each unique value in color by. Now, the next visualization on the right helps to illustrate that when working with axis.color and node navigation, your node navigations relate to the colors and the order of the colors, which will come into play when using node navigation methods like next and previous. The expression on this visualization attempts to calculate the sum of oil for the previous color. And we did this with axis.x, where we said calculate for previous axis.x or your previous month. And that made sense. It starts to get a little bit tricky if you're using axis.color with previous or next. And so I want you to notice three key things about this visualization. First off, notice that Wolfcamp A, which showed up in this visualization does not appear here at all. And that is because there is no previous to Wolfcamp A. It's the first value. Second, the value shown for Wolfcamp B is actually the value for Wolfcamp A. So January 1.24 million is actually Wolfcamp A. And what it's doing is taking the previous value, which is Wolfcamp A. And then thirdly, the value shown for Wolfcamp D is the value for Wolfcamp B, 
which we would expect given what we just learned, but it doesn't appear until Wolf Camp D actually has data. Wolf Camp D doesn't have anything until April. So even though Wolf Camp B has values the entire way, it doesn't show up until Wolf Camp D does. Thus, when using axis.color, be aware that node navigation is relative to the order of the colors as they come into Spotfire. You can change that ordering by going into column properties and changing the sort order. Here, I could configure this sort order and put these in a different order, which would change their relative positioning. And then finally, I want to show you a somewhat legitimate example of axis.color in a bar chart, along with a good reason to only use axis.color in line charts. In both charts on this page, I have placed the average oil production by well by month on the y-axis, along with an expression that is calculating the average oil production for all wells. The average of all wells is the yellow line. So this line is an average of the blue, the red, and the green. And I've done the same thing on the bar chart. But the yellow lines overlap each other. And so it looks like one line when actually what you're getting is a duplicate or a triplicate of the average. And in the bar chart, the yellow lines duplicate and create an ugly, ugly mess. So this is why I say that axis.color is better used in line charts than bar charts. That wraps up this discussion of axis names in bar charts. Next week, I'll look at axis names in line charts. Thank you for watching. If you found the content useful, please like, share, and subscribe. If you really liked it, please share the link to this video on your own social media platforms. Thank you very much.